Father, we thank you for this service. Glorious service, global service, combined service together. Lord, I pray everything your people need, you pass on to them today in Jesus' name. Your people will keep on standing for you. They will not fail. They will not be fearful. They will not fret. And Lord, I pray every purpose you have decided for everyone, you will fulfill in Jesus' name. Make my brother there strong. Make my sister there strong. And nothing will be able to stand before you. That Lord, everything you have ordained, everything you have planned, I pray every boy, every girl, every young person, every young adult, you will do in their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, be glorified in every life. That everywhere we go, one by one, every village, every city, every town, every state, every local government, and every nation we go, that same fire, and that same fervency, and that same focus you find in everyone in Jesus' name. Help me, help your people, help everyone to stand at the center of your will every time in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. you can see that. We're coming to Matthew chapter 14. And I'm reading from verse 14. Matthew 14 verse 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude. And he was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. If you're still sick there today, you'll be healed in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 1. In Mark chapter 8, verse 1, in those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat. Jesus called his disciples unto him and says unto them, verse 2, it says, I have compassion on the multitude because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. In verse 3, it says, and if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way for divers of them came from far. We're looking at Luke chapter 9, verse 11. And in Luke chapter 9, verse 11, it says, And the people, when they knew, they knew it, they followed him, and he received them, and spake unto them of the kingdom of God. He spake unto them. He proclaimed the word unto them. He preached the word unto them. After that, he healed them that had need of healing. As we look at those verses and those chapters today, we're looking at Christ's compassionate healing and provision of food. Christ's compassionate healing and provision of of food. There are three things we're looking at as we consider that number one, the compassionate healing of the sick by Christ. The compassionate healing. He healed because he had compassion. And that compassion is still there today. The compassionate healing of the sick by Christ. Number two, the considerate provision of food through his care. He cared so much. And he still cares today. And because he cares today, he is considerate. And he provides. It is being considerate. He provides food because he cares. Number three, the composite health plan. Health care. Health program. He has 
a composite health program, health plan for all saints under his covenant. Let's come to number one. Number one is the compassionate healing of the sick by Christ. As we consider the healing of Christ through his compassion, we look at three things. Number one, number one, the promise of healing by the compassionate Christ. Number two, the progress of the healed with constant consecration. And number three is the preservation of health by or and complete kill. Look at number one. Number one is the promise of healing by the compassionate Christ. He promised that he will heal. And he is a faithful Christ. And he is the unlimited, the unchanging Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. What did he promise he will heal? Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 7. And Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. He was talking to the centurion that came to him. The captain that came to him. The convert that comes to him. The Christian that comes to him. Anyone that comes to him today. The impartial Christ. Who always says the same good, positive practical thing to everyone who comes he says the same thing jesus says unto him as he says unto her as he says unto them as he says unto us as he says to everyone on the face of the earth if you will only come i will come and heal him this day He'll come and heal you. He'll heal your soul. He'll heal your body. He'll heal you and you'll become every weight whole in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 22. In Mark chapter 9 verse 22. And of times it cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But... If thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. This was a father, a father of a tormented child, a vexed child, an epileptic child. And he came, he had brought the situation to the disciples of Christ and he could do nothing. And now Christ came Whatever problems you have tried to solve and they were not solved, Christ has come to you today. And then he, he didn't give up, you will not give up. You know, something has to give up. Either the man or the malady. But the man will not give up. The malady has to give up. Either the seeker or the sickness, one has to give up. The seeker will not give up. The sickness has to give up. I see somebody there. You will not give up. I said you will not give up. That infirmity, that sickness has to give up. And so the man did not give up. And he said, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Verse 23 and Jesus said unto him, and Jesus says unto me, and Jesus says unto you, and Jesus says unto her, and Jesus said unto them there, if thou canst believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. If you can only believe, all things are possible unto you. As you believe, I believe. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, 
Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Lord will be good unto you. Because it's still the same. He has not changed. Look at number two here. Number two here, we're looking at the progress of the healed with constant consecration. We need to understand how the people of that time, how they behaved, how they reacted, how they responded after they were healed. Constant consecration as the progress of those who are healed. I want you to look at Mark chapter 10, verse 51. In Mark chapter 10, verse 51, And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The key is in your hand. What you get is what you say. What you say is what you receive. It says, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Look at verse 52. In verse 52, and Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Your faith has made you whole. Amen. It's done already. Amen. Now, what did the man do? What, look at what the man did. We're told in the latter part of that verse. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Didn't go back to idol worship. Didn't go back to nightclub. Didn't go back to the gang. Didn't go back to occultism. Didn't go back to herbalism. Now that the Lord Jesus had healed him, he received the sight and he followed Jesus in the way. That's how they made progress, those people that were healed by the Lord. It tells us in John chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 51. John Chapter 4, reading from verse 51, and as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Your son liveth. Your daughter liveth. Your wife, your husband liveth. And you yourself, you live in good Perfect health in Jesus' name. The man had come to the Lord Jesus. And this man left his son sick at home at the point of death. And he appealed to Jesus that Jesus will come and heal him. And Jesus said, go your way. Your son liveth. The man believed that. When you believe the proclamation of the word of God, you'll be healed. Amen. And then he was going. And the servants met him. And they told him. And they said, things turned around. The spirit of death was cancelled. And your son now lives. Look at verse 52. In verse 52, then inquired he of them. The hour when he began to amend, he had the notion, the idea, he'll begin to amend and then he'll amend gradually. And they said, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Yesterday at the seventh hour, at the mention of the name of Jesus, that evil thing will flee from your life. Now, the question is now, after they recognized that that was healing from Christ, what did they do? What did they do? Look at verse 53. In verse 53, and the, so the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus says unto him, Thy son liveth. See how they made progress after they were healed. And see how we would make progress after we are healed. And himself believed 
and his whole house. When the Lord has done something great and something wonderful like that, the thing to do is that you and your house, if you're going to keep the killing and keep the healer with you, is that yourself will not go beyond healing and you come to salvation. And you, your wife, your children, your household, everyone, every one of your dependents, now you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking at chapter 9 of John. John chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 35. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. That's a man that was born blind. And the Lord healed him of the blindness. And he began to talk and discuss with all those uh, masters of the law. And he said, since the world began, we have not heard that anyone opened the eyes of the blind that was born blind. And he has done it for me. And so they, they didn't like that. They wanted to hold on to their false doctrine and their false tradition. And they wanted to hold on to a religion that does not save. So they cast him out. And then we are told, he said unto him, Jesus now found him and said to him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? Verse 36. In verse 36, he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? Verse 37. Jesus says unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and he is it, it is that talketh with thee. Verse 38, and he said, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Now you see what those people did after they were healed, is that they now accept him as Lord. They take him as Lord, and they worship him as Lord. Look at uh, Luke chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 38. Luke chapter 8, verse 38. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Look at verse 39. Return to thine own house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. That's what they did at that time. After they received healing, they didn't just say, praise the Lord, I got my healing. Anytime there's another crusade, I'm coming back again. And they never talked to anybody. They never touch anybody. They never invite anybody. But you know, he went and he did what the Lord has said. Go. Go back home and tell everyone around how great things Jesus has done for thee. It's, you're not going to tell them how great things Peter has done for me, John has done for me, Apostle has done for me. Whatever apostles manifested, it was through Jesus. And so you'll go and tell them how great things Jesus had done unto me. Look at verse 40. In verse 40, and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him. That man went around and told everybody, and because he told everybody, all those people were waiting for him, that's what you will do. That you've seen the miracle, you've seen the healing, you've seen the deliverance, and then you'll go back home now, the talk of no more gossip, and no more talking about this or about that other irrelevant thing. You're not talking about Jesus who has saved you. Who has made you whole, who has healed you, who has delivered you from every kind, every form of oppression. Look at number three here. Number three here is the preservation of health and complete cure. After the Lord healed the people, they were not getting sick and getting healed, getting sick and getting healed, getting sick and getting healed. How did they maintain their health? 
How did they maintain the complete care of the Lord at giving them? See the instruction Jesus gave in John chapter 5 verse 14. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple, not in the beer parlor. Jesus findeth him in the temple, not in the shrine of an idol. Jesus findeth him in the temple, not in the house of a strange woman. After the Lord had healed him, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more. The grace had come to his life. He got healing, he got grace. He got healing, he got forgiveness. He got healing, he got freedom. He got healing, he got salvation. And the Lord, on the basis of the grace that came to his life, on the basis of the righteousness of Christ, imparted unto him, imputed unto him, on the basis of the righteousness from heaven that comes by grace, imparted unto him he said you have made whole you're healed you have not only got healed you have also got the power to go and sin no more and so he said to him sin no more lie no more steal no more deceive no more fight no more transgress no more sin no more lest it was thin come Unto thee. That's how they kept the healing. That's how they kept their complete cure. We're told in Proverbs chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4. We're looking at verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Verse 21. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Now you take your Bible, you read your Bible every day, you look at the promises of God every day, the, 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 the precepts of God every day, the prophecy of the word every day, and you look at what the word has proclaimed unto you, how you ought to live, and you will not allow the word to depart from your eyes. What's the result of that? Look at verse 22. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. That is how they maintained the health and the healing that the Lord had given them. Psalm 103, I'm reading from verse 1. In Psalm 103, verse 1, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. In verse 3, it says, O forgiveth all thine iniquities, and no healeth all thy diseases. Verse 4 tells us, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Look at verse 5, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that the youth is renewed like the eagles. You are glorifying God every time. That's how to keep the healing. You are showing gratitude to the Lord every time. That's how to keep the healing. And you are blessing the name of the Lord in the time of your devotion and prayer. That's how to keep the complete cure. And that's how your health, your life is renewed day by day. And it's renewed like the eagles in First John chapter five i'm reading from verse 18 first john chapter 5 reading from verse 18 we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not he does not continue to sin the old practice of sin the old lifestyle of sinning he abandons that i'm a new creature now i'm in christ now and if any man be in christ is a new creature Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Any new creature there? 
I said any new creature there? Let me see your hand. I hear your voice. Any, any new creature there? The Lord will keep you away from sin. Away from Satan. Away from all the pollutions of society. And a new life you will live for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. We know, we know, we know by experience. We know by the touch of the Lord in our lives. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. That's how they catch their healing. That's how they catch their complete kill. That's how they catch the power of God in their lives. Keep us in self, and that wicked one, his name is Satan, his name is the devil, his name is the destroyer, that that wicked one toucheth him not. Amen. He will not touch you. You will not lose your healing. You will not lose anything, whatever the Lord has given to you in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two. Now, point number two is uh, the considerate provision of food through his care. He didn't only give um, healing. He gave food because that was for their strength. And we're looking at three things here. Number one, number one, the food at the foundation of health and happiness. Number two, the food of faith for holding, keeping our healing. Number three, the food of fitness. Fitness. You know, you can ask any athlete. What kind of food they eat because they have to keep feet for the race. And you can ask any achiever how they achieve, they have to keep feet for the achievement. And then you ask the people who are on their way to heaven, they have to keep feet through holiness for heaven. Number three, the food of fitness in holiness for heaven. Heaven. Let's look at number one here. Number one here is the food at the foundation of health and happiness. The Lord said, They've been with me now for three days. I don't want to send them away fasting and fainting. And then they did not have the strength for the journey back home. And food is the foundation of health. I want you to look at Acts chapter 14, verse 17. Acts chapter 14, verse 17. Nevertheless, he led not himself without witness in that he did good, talking about God, and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons. Why? Filling our hearts with food and gladness. The hungry person is not a happy person generally. The one that lacks appropriate food, convenient food for his life, lacks gladness. And so the foundation of our happiness and our health is the provision of food that God gives unto us in Acts chapter 27. Reading from verse 33. Acts 27, verse 33. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat to each food, saying, This day, is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting and have taken nothing. They were in a storm. And because of the storm, 
they became so afraid, fearful, that they couldn't eat anything. First day, second day, seventh day, tenth day, until this, fourteenth day. There are people when they have lost a relative, a loved one, because of that loss and because of that storm in their lives, they, they lose appetite that they don't have. The food is there, but they cannot eat. And Paul, the apostle, is saying by the Spirit of God, this is the 14th day. As you have continued fasting and you have taken nothing. And it was beseeching them, pleading with them that they must eat. Why? Look at verse 34. In verse 34, wherefore, I pray you, I plead with you to take some food, some meat, for this is for your health. Take some food, take some meal, take some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall not any air fall from the head of any of you. And somebody says, Amen. Amen. That's why he provides food for us. And we eat the appropriate food at the appropriate time so that we can keep healthy. Look at number two here. Number two, the food of faith for holding our healing. There is a food for the stomach. That's the one I spoke about now. There is the food of faith. Look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. The natural, normal, physical food for the belly. There's life beyond the body, beyond the belly. It says, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Why? Look at Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. The faith to be saved cometh by what you hear. The faith by which you are healed cometh by what you hear. The faith for your deliverance, it cometh and it is concretized by the word you hear. So then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now you have a body, you feed the body with food. And how many times do you eat every day? Now, you have a soul, you have a spirit, and it's faith that builds up the strength of your soul and the strength of your spirit. How many times do you take the word of God in the week? Do you only take it on Monday? Or maybe you are not even there on Monday. Or do you only take it on Thursday? Maybe you are not even there on Thursday. Do you only take it on Sunday? If you eat like that, once Monday, once Thursday, once Sunday, and then you miss out some Thursdays, you miss out some Mondays, you even miss out some Sundays. How will, you, how will it be if your body did not have the regular feeding and sustenance by the bread that feeds your body? Now the food of faith, we need to take that every time. You take it in church and when you get back home, you go over those references that were learned. Open your Bible because faith cometh by Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Job chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 12. In Job chapter 23, verse 12, neither have I gone back from the commandment of his leaves. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I have esteemed, exalted, 
lifted up. I have valued the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. That's what builds up your faith. And when your faith is built up, you're able to keep your healing. You're able to keep all the provisions and all the goodness of God that are showered upon your life. Number three here. Number three is the food for fitness. The food for fitness. Any athlete will tell you. You see them, how they, uh, they are fit for the race. You know what they do? They eat at the appropriate time. They sleep at the appropriate time. They exercise at the appropriate time. If they were only eating and eating, and they were lying on the bed every time, no exercise, the food will deposit a lot of fat in their body. They will not be fit for the race they were to run. And if they were sitting in front of the television four hours every day and just looking at television, 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 about uh, on the average, they tell us in the world, some people spend 19 hours a week watching television. It's not, number one, they're watching something polluting. Number two, they're just sitting down there and their body is not getting the proper exercise. But as you eat, you sleep well, eat at the right time, and you exercise normally. Then you're fit for whatever it is you are called to do. Actually, the rhythm of your eating and the rhythm of your sleeping and the rhythm of your exercise also affects your brain. Makes your brain to be sharp. Makes your brain to have retentive memory. But if you eat and then you don't do all these other things, it weakens the brain, it weakens the body, and it makes you unfit for what you need to do in life. Number three now is the food for fitness in holiness for heaven. We're looking at John chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 27. It says, Labor not for the meat which perisheth. Don't let all your concentration, all your life, all your commitment be to the physical food. It says, But labor for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for him as God the Father sealed. Verse 63. In verse 63, it is the spirit, the quickness. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That makes you feed for heaven. The words of Christ. You take that to heart. You believe that. You act on that. You behave that. That word, it makes you feed for heaven. In Galatians chapter 2, reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, we're looking at verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. The old man crucified with Christ. The selfish life crucified with Christ, the depraved life, crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, for Peter, chapter two, reading from verse two. In First Peter, chapter two, reading from verse two, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. The emphasis of the scripture is that you, as a newborn babe. Or those who have been converts to the Lord, disciples of the Lord, for a long time, you do not allow 
activity, profession, day-to-day -day running of your life and your family and your business to take you away from his word that you desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. Verse 9, in verse 9, it tells us, but we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. Not a sinful nation, church. Not a depraved nation, church. Not a selfish, self-centered nation, church. The church is a nation unto the Lord. A nation within a larger nation, a little circle within a bigger circle, and it's an holy nation, a peculiar people that he should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look at First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 3. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us unto a lively hope. Amen. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And then in verse 4, it says, To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Reserved in heaven for me. Are you there? Are you going to be there? Praise the Lord, you'll be there. But that inheritance is reserved in heaven for you. Look at verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith. That's why the word of God is very important. Because faith, uh, the word builds faith in your life. And it says we're kept by the power of God. Through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. How are we going to get to that heaven where the inheritance is laid up for us? That same chapter, look at verse 14. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14. It says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Then in verse 15, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. In verse 16, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. That's the holiness that prepares us and gets us to heaven, follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The food, the word that prepares us, makes us fit in holiness for life on earth, and for eternal life in heaven. Let's come to point number three now. Point number three, the composite health plan for all saints under his covenant. Composite. And man is a composite personality. We have body. We have soul. We have spirit. By our body, we're able to contact the world around us. Our eyes, our ears, our hands, our feet, our smell. Every part of the body is made so that we can contact our society, the people around us, the soul. The soul is the part of force that feels when you feel sad, sorrowful, glad, happy, 
joyful that's your soul that's what the psalmist said why art thou cast down O my soul because of the dejection and the rejection and the sadness and the sorrow that brings uh, that kind of sinking feeling uh, in the soul that that's what makes us to contact ourselves we're conscious of ourselves i feel so i know i am i'm joyful so i know i am i'm excited it's my soul that makes me conscious of myself and personality now the spirit as the deep speaketh unto the deep, is the spirit by which we contact God. Our hands cannot contact God. Our eyes cannot contact God. It's the, the deep thing in our spirit that we sense the presence of God. We sense the goodness of God. It's in our spirit we have the witness of the Holy Ghost that God is and that we are his children and he gives us health for the body health for the soul and health for the spirit and look at uh, psalm 67 and i'm reading from verse 2 psalm 67 verse 2 that thy way may be known upon earth thy saving health saving health saving health among all nations and then in third john only one chapter there verse two third john reading from verse two beloved i wish i pray i desire above all things that thou mayest prosper one and be in health too even as thy soul prospereth three that the composite for the body for the soul for the spirit the lord will make you keep you healthy amen, amen. three things number one the promised healing for the sick body number two the peaceful healing for the sin sick soul. Number three, the precious healing for the seeking spirit. Look at number one. Number one, the promised healing for the sick body. It tells us in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep, that's a secret, and keep, and do, and obey all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. The promised healing for the sick body. Chapter 23 of Exodus. Exodus chapter 23. And we're looking at verse 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God. Amen. You will not serve the devil. Amen. You will not serve idols. Amen. You will serve the Lord your God. And you shall serve the Lord your God. And you shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Amen. Then in verse 26. And there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I want you to come to Matthew now, chapter 8, reading from verse 7. Matthew, chapter 8, verse 7, the promised healing for the sick body. Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, the centurion answered 
and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. I did hear your amen there. In verse 16, verse 16, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed how many? And you are included. And he healed all that were sick. Verse 17, in verse 17, that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took her infirmities and sicknesses. Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 17. Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Are the believers there? Online, the believers are there. Television, radio, every congregation, are the believers there? Yeah. Decide and shall follow you because you believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Verse 18, they shall take up serpents. You throw those serpents away. That serpent will not walk on your body anymore. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it says, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following. Amen. 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 Look at number two here. Number two, there is the peaceful healing for the sin sake soul. When the soul is troubled, the soul traumatized, the soul tortured, the soul tormented that will come to the Lord. There had been no peace. There's no peace, says the Lord, unto the wicked. And when the soul is troubled like that, we bring that soul as we brought the body to the Lord, and the Lord healed the body. We now bring the soul unto the Lord, and the sin sick soul is healed. Welcome to Psalm 41, reading from verse 3. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of anguish, languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul. He wasn't sick in the body, he wasn't blind, he wasn't dead, he wasn't paralyzed, but he had a sin sick soul, a sick soul, a sorrowful soul, a disheartened, weakened soul. And it was so sad, it was like he couldn't do anything. The sorrow in the soul paralyzed all his efforts. And so he said, Oh Lord, I need healing for my soul. And he said, heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Look at Psalm 6. I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 6, verse 2. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my Bones are vexed. Verse 3. In verse 3, my soul is also so vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? In verse 4, it says, Return, O Lord, 
deliver my soul. There are times when the soul needs deliverance and healing. It says, oh, save me by thy mercy's sake, for thy mercy's sake. Jeremiah chapter 31, we're reading from verse 11. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. When you are living in society and then you have people who are stronger than you are and they're shooting arrows and they're making your life oppressed and it's like you cannot live in freedom and in peace and it affects your soul. It gives you the promise for the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than you. All the powers that are stronger than you are, they'll come under your feet in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. For wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd and their soul. You see that? And their soul shall be as watered garden and they shall not sorrow anymore at all. Amen. Great amen. amen. The sorrow of the soul taken away and it says i'll give them peace i'll give them rest i'll give them joy i'll give them satisfaction in their soul and their soul shall sorrow no more at all in Luke chapter 4 reading from verse 18 Luke chapter 4 verse 18 the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted the brokenhearted it's not talking about the body now he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to search at liberty them that are bruised. He will set your soul free this day in Jesus' name. Number three. Now, number three, the precious healing of the seeking spirit in uh, first samuel chapter 1 reading from verse 15 first samuel chapter 1 verse 15 and anna answered and said no my lord i am a woman of a sorrowful spirit you see that and i wasn't uh, seeking the body but now she said high priest eli I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I poured out my soul before the Lord. In verse 16, it says, Count not thine handmaid, for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, have I spoken hitherto? Look at verse 17. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And I say to you this day, Go in peace. Yeah. The God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And in verse 18, and she said, Let thy handmaid find grace. In thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad because the spirit had now been healed. The Lord will heal your soul, he will heal your spirit. That's what we refer to as inner 
healing. An inner healing, the healing of the inner man is as important as the healing of the body. And as you come to the Lord, you look at yourself as the whole man, the composite man, your body, your soul, your spirit. And if any part of your personality is injured, troubled, traumatized, sorrowful, disheartened, weighed down, you bring everything to the Lord, and the Lord, as he heals your body, he'll heal your soul. As he heals your soul, he will heal your spirit. Psalm 147, I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 147, verse 3, he heals the broken in heart. Broken in body, he heals them. Broken in bones, he heals them. Broken in the heart, he heals the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. Then in verse 4, it says, He tells the number of the stars, he calls them all by their names. And then in verse 5, it says, great is our Lord, and of great power is understanding is infinite. The Lord will heal you through and through. Hosea chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 4. Hosea chapter 14, reading from verse 4. It says, I will heal their backsliding. You see that? When somebody has backsliding, he has gone away from the path of righteousness. And then he's in the far country. He comes to himself. He says, I'm suffering here. I'm sorrowful here. And many of my, the hired servants of my father, they're well taken care of. And I feel the reproach and the agony of backsliding here. Then the Lord said, I'll heal the backslider too of the backsliding. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For my anger is turned away from him. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, Ephraim shall say, What have I to do anymore with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, who is wise? And he shall understand these things, prudent, and he shall know them, for the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them, but the transgressors shall fall therein. You will not fall therein. You'll be the wise understanding. There's healing for the body. There's healing for the soul. There's healing for your spirit. Third John chapter 1 verse 2. In Third John chapter 1, reading from verse 2, Beloved, I wish, I pray, I desire. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Anybody there? Now, how do we prosper? If our brain is not in good health, if our eyes are not in good health, if our ears are not in good health, if our hands are not strong, strong to hold and strong to work, not in good health, if we feel any pain, any part of the body, how do we make progress? It says, I wish above all things that thou Prosper, thou mayest prosper. If there is sorrow in the heart, if there is heartache, 
And if the, if the wounded spirit is carrying a burden uh, that is greater than our health, our strength can hold, how do we prosper if our heart is broken, if the tears are flowing, if internally we're, dis we're disjointed and disorganized because of the problem of the soul and the spirit. Everything needs to come under the healing power of the Lord. Then we will have the realization, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Amen? Amen. In health. Amen. Amen? You sleep and you sleep well. Not that you keep awake and you are counting all the planks on the ceiling in the night. You wake up, uh, you know, like you sleep one hour, you wake up, you're not able to sleep again. And then you go to the toilet, you come back, you're not able to sleep again. And you're thinking of, you know, what happened at that time, what happened at that time. And thoughts are coming in your heart. And you're not a peaceful man. In the day, there is no peace. In the night, there is no peace. You're not healthy. You may say, I'm not blind, I'm not deaf, I'm not uh, dumb. You may say, my legs are not broken, but you can't sleep at night. You can't enjoy the day, you can't enjoy the night. That's what the Lord is coming to you, and He wants to give you total healing. Amen. Complete healing. Composite healing in your body, in your soul, and in your spirit. You have something that happened during the day. And then you keep on remembering that. Why did I say that? Why did I do that? Why did I go there? Why did I touch that? Why did I drink that? Why did I smoke that? And guilt and condemnation will keep your body and will keep your eyes open and awake. That's what will bring to the Lord so that total healing, complete healing. He heals the body, he heals the soul, and then he heals the heart. Beloved, you're becoming beloved of the Lord. Am I talking to somebody there? Yes, you are the one I'm talking to. You'll be a beloved of the Lord. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Your soul will prosper. A prospering soul. What kind of soul is like? Is that? He calls the name of the Lord, and the Lord says, Here am I, what do you want? That soul is prospered. He reads the word of God. He has understanding. He has revelation. He has inspiration. That's a prospered soul. He asks anything from above, and the Lord gives, and then he goes to his place of work. Every door is opening. Everywhere he goes, people are standing there and they're saying, we have been expecting you coming. And he comes in every time to the blessing of God. And his head does not lack ointment. And his voice does not lack assurance. His heart does not lack the joy of the Lord. And the Lord is with him every time that soul is prospering. And I pray the total prosperity provided for you, for the body, for the soul, for the spirit, will be granted unto you in Jesus' name. Today, as you pray, God will answer. Amen. All the sadness the Lord will take away. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy? Amen. Happy? Amen. Healthy? Amen. Holy? Amen. Heavenly minded. You'll soon get there. Why don't you stand up and tell the Lord, oh Lord, I'm here. I want everything you have provided. And I'm going to have health in my body. That all that the Lord has provided for our body, for our spirit, and for our soul, everything is now yours. Come, come. There's no discrimination. He will not push you back. He will not say no. Anything you need, restoration, you need revival, you need righteousness, everything is now available. He loves you. And he has provided, he has prepared everything for you. Think about that. He thinks about our health. He thinks about our sound, our 
our soundness it thinks about even our brain it thinks about everything he provides it thinks about a holistic thing provision he has provided for you it thinks about a happy life for you he thinks about a healthy life for you he thinks about a holy life for you he thinks about a humble life for you he thinks about a heavenly life for you why don't you ask the lord pray and tell the lord i know everything is available tell the lord all things pertaining to life and godliness everything he provides open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer if the food if the bread is there then you must make allowance to go where the food is and take of that food and the fruit do you have a balanced diet or do you only take one kind of food everything is provided everything is made available and the meat and the fish and the bird and the chicken everything provided nourish your body don't stop yourself nourish your body make it balanced what you take what you have and take it at the appropriate time breakfast appropriate time lunch appropriate time dinner supper appropriate time make it varied with the varied needs of your body Take the juice. Don't always juice them. Don't miss the fiber in them. And not starch, starch, starch every time. Balance it up. Know the condition of your body and know what is appropriate for your body. Balance it up. don't miss out on water you drink enough water don't allow the risk of stone in your kidney water water nourishes your body dissolves those stones in the kidney don't allow your nerves your muscles your system to be deprived of enough water drink don't drink harmful liquid fermented juice that rather ulcerate your system and derail derange your brain and it's spiritually let the bread of life, the word of God, be taken regularly as you feed your body, which only lays for a few years on earth, much more so feed your spirit feed your inner man with the word the bread of life the word the water of life feed well 
and vary the spiritual diet Old Testament, New Testament from the Pentateuch Genesis to Deuteronomy from the historical books from Joshua to Esther from the poetic books from Job to the songs of Solomon and then from the prophets, major prophets, minor prophets feed yourself and then you come to the New Testament feed the word of his grace feed the word of his power feed the words of the promises of God feed yourself so that your inner man and your outer man in a balanced way will be well fed and then your feet to live on earth was strength your feet to live on earth with real focus and then your feet to get to heaven your faith faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God the food the faith that makes you feed for us and for heaven in your prayer take proper decision as to how to feed well not for gluttony but for health make your consecration as when you will feed on the word of God your commitment as to how you will live according to the word that you have heard and your contribution to the kingdom of God and your spent and be spent for the progress of the kingdom of God make a decision and live on that decision and the Lord will give you strength physically, spiritually will keep you going feeling well every day learning the word leaning on the Lord every day then it qualifies you for heaven and at last you live with him because you have lived here for him you live with him forever and ever in Jesus name we pray the Lord answer your prayer in Jesus name Father, we thank you for what we have learned. We pray, Lord, all these things will not fall to the ground, but will be fruitful in every heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray you bless our bread, you bless our water, and you take sickness, infirmity, disease away from everyone. In Jesus' name. Amen because of Calvary and because of Christ who died to pay for everything and to take our sicknesses and infirmities away I pray that any sickness, any infirmity in our system because of how we lived in the past of whatever is seen, take all that infirmity, all that sickness away from everyone in Jesus name make your people healthy make your people strong and make your people feed to live feed to work 
feet to run I'm free to do everything you have appointed us for us to do on earth in Jesus name and Lord I pray grant your people the bread of life and Lord I pray that spiritual strength salvation sanctification holy ghost baptism and power will be the gift and the lord for every one of your children in jesus name the desire and also the passion to wait on the lord so that we renew our strength grant unto everyone and we pray the weak will become strong the firm will become very much strengthened in Jesus' name. Your presence in our lives, your power in our lives, your prominence in every life will make us a new man every day. A new woman every day. We wake up in the morning and we eat the bread of life and we drink the water of life and then we go into life with daily renewed strength in Jesus' name. Lord, every obstacle in our way for progress, every obstacle in our way for success, every obstacle in our way to hinder, to debar, to stop. Clear it from every life in Jesus' name. And make us, Lord, to achieve whatever you want us to achieve here. And then, hereafter, to have the crown and the reward. None of us will miss any of that in Jesus' name. As your people go, clear the way for everyone. Take evil away from everyone. And I pray that your purpose, your plan will be fulfilled in the life of everyone as we make progress and nothing will stop our progress all through life in Jesus' name. Your mighty hand on everyone. Your protection for everyone. Go before us, go before us and Lord, take us to our expected destination. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 